All right, time for another video. It's been quite a while. Hey, um, I thought it'd be cool to look at the DM42 again. Four useful programs for the DM42. I'm gonna look at basically four things that my TI-36X Pro does that the DM42 does not do without a little programming. So let's get going. First one we have here is a quadratic. It's not easily factorable. We want to use our technology to find the roots without having to do the quadratic formula. So on the TI, you go under the polysolve and we have an x squared, so go in there. This is going to already have the values because I've run through this. So 3 for our x squared, 7 for our x. I could just hit enter, but I'm typing, typing them in. Negative 3 for our c value and solve it. And we get root number 1. We can hit enter, get root number 2. Um, and something this calculator does that I haven't yet implemented on the DM42. And if you go down to the next screen, it shows you the uh, leading coefficient, which we already knew, the A value. And it gives you the coordinates of the vertex, which is nice. I realized that if I wanted to use this calculator, I needed to add some of these functions. All right, so now let's look at doing these with the DM42. I have a um, oops, I have a custom menu set up here with some of these useful programs. So quadratic, I pick it and it's running a program. I'll put in my A value. I think these are already in there. My B value and my C value. And it gives me the two roots, x1, x2. And it also gives me the discriminant. I added that because sometimes that's helpful to know if you're looking for exact answers. Let's say you wanted to find a system of equations on the TI. You go under System Solve, and it's a 2 by 2, meaning it has an x and a y, and we have two equations. And we fill in these values. So I've got a 3, a 7, 27, a 5. I prefer to leave that positive and make this a negative 4, rather than some then subtracting it, and negative 2. If you don't do that, sometimes you don't realize you've changed the plus to a minus sign, and it can cause you woes. All right, solve it. How about that? x equals 2, y equals 3. Let's say we want to solve this system of equations. There is a built-in solver in here. You go into matrix, and you go to SimQ, like simultaneous equations asks you how many unknowns, you put that in, and it generates the matrix matrices that you need. I've just found it takes too many key presses to, to put all this information in. So I'll, I'll go through it real quick. You would hit matrix A and you put in the information. Three, hit the over seven, and 20, oops, nope. And then this is the five and the negative four. Now I've got that in there, and I exit, and I need to now do my matrix B, which is my constants here. I've got a 27 and a negative 2. And once you have those in there, you leave, and then matrix X will give you the solutions. So the solutions are X equals 2 and Y equals 3. It's just too many key presses. So what I did is I wrote a little program that you can use to, oops, down here, xy equation, and it goes through and says, okay, what's my a1, 3, my b is 7, my c value is 27, 5, negative 4, and negative 2. And once you get that in there, it displays the answers, and it puts them the x values on the x register and the y value is, or y answer is on the y register. Way quicker, you know, a lot fewer keystrokes, so I like that one. What if we wanted to solve a cubic equation, or find the roots of a cubic equation? Um, we go under a polysolver, just like we were doing a quadratic, but we pick this cubic, and we put in our coefficients. So we have 1, 
negative 15, 71, negative 105. Solve it. We get x1 is 7, x2 is 5, and x3 is 3. Very simple. Uh, again, you get the opportunity to save those if you want to so that they're accessible once you quit the solver. So like I could use them here if I would have saved them. What if we want to find the cubic roots here? Um, again, we're going to use a little custom program called cube. Cube asks you for your coefficients. So we have a 1, uh, negative 15, 71, and negative 105. And it produces, there's our x3 value, meaning our third root, 7. There's no order here, but 7. And then I run stop again, 5 and 3. It uses the cubic formula, which there is like, like there is a quadratic formula. There is a similar one for the cubic roots. All right, if we want to find a summation, we go and look at the calculator and realize, oh, it's not there. It's kind of hidden underneath the math menu. You go under sum, and it uses x, not i. But we're going to go from 1 to 20, and we're going to sum up. 1 over 2 to the x, come over here, times x. Does a little chugging and gives us our answer, which is suspiciously close to 2, which is the exact answer. Last one here, a summation. I couldn't find summation in this little guy here, so I just made a quick little program, and what it does it takes the contents, this is the part that's a little obtuse. You have to go into, I've got it called f of x. You go into this and you have to have your program in there. In other words, you have to have your, your equation in there. Um, I won't bore you with that, but I've entered this in there. It's, you just go through it in the steps that you would with RPN to enter the equation. It's not ideal. I'll just say it that way. It is not ideal. It's not nearly as simple as that TI, but it's not terrible. So I put that in there. So we go into our custom menu, go down a menu, sum f of x. Where do you want to start? I want to start where x is 1 or i is 1. I run stop. How many, or I guess, how, what's my ending number? Which in this case is the same as the number of iterations. 20, but it's actually where is it going to stop? And it does assume you're going up by ones. Um, it's, you know, index one, two, three, four, and so on. Run it, and it gives the sum total right there. And if you ever want to see the crazy accuracy of this calculator, it goes way out. So, again, same answer we got on the TI, and not built in. I'm kind of surprised at some of the things that are not built into this calculator, but I love the fact that without a whole lot of difficulty, you can create these programs to compensate for a few of these weaknesses. So cool little calculator. I'm really happy with it. And hopefully this is helpful. I'm going to put a link to the four different programs here so that if you're interested, you could download them and put them on your device. And hopefully this is useful to some of you. Or at least you enjoyed it. All right. Later. Thanks.